learning session. Today we will be discussing navigating map view, changing a preset, working with the sensors, timed events, ballast replacement, maintenance reporting, and user permissions. Here's an example in map view of the Montego Bay Convention Center. It is a multi-building facility. Here you can see it's a floor plan sort of setup. I can navigate between these pages quite simply between hitting these arrows and go into the next page. Or I can actually go into the bookmarks and go to the individual buildings. Once I'm in one of these individual buildings, I can double click an area and I can see all the channels available in that area and their, pre and their preset levels. So this is at preset 1. These do not have fade rates, they're just relays. These do have faders. I can go in and actually set what that level is to be on preset 1. I can go into any of the presets and you'll see here on preset 4 that everything's at off, which is our default preset for preset 4. Now I can say OK, go back to my menu, and even go back to my title page to leave it for the next person. OK, so real quickly we want to talk about changing a preset. Um, we're going to go ahead and go into area 3 here, which is our boardroom, and look at what we have here. In the boardroom, we have a cove, down lights, screens, and accents. Um, and we have a number of presets that we can choose from. So I go to my drop down here, and we want to look at typical uses for this boardroom. So a presentation would be a typical, a typical use for this boardroom. So I look at my presentation, and I can see my cove lights are at 100%. My down lights are at 20, my screen lights are off, and my accents are all the way to 100%. And I can simply just drop through my drop down and look at preset 2. Now meeting's a little bit different. I have cove and down light and screen and accent set at different levels. And now clean, I'm going to want everything at 100%. I need them to see everything so they can clean the best available. And then preset 4, I'm just going to leave it off so everything's at 0%. So there's how I can go in and move these sliders to adjust the preset levels for each of these scene names. Quickly, we're going to talk about programming occupancy sensors or vacancy sensors. Um, essentially, all our sensors have a photo sensor as well as motion and light control. Um, so what we're going to look at here is some of the more advanced features. Uh, here you see I have a, a sensor in my project, and I'm going to go ahead and look at the device properties of it, and now the motion detector properties. So here I can see what the actual motion detector is, is seeing at the time. So if I need to adjust this for an open door or for a blank space that, that is seeing outside of the, the area that I'm actually trying to control, I can adjust that because I can see this live level as it's happening. Um, some of the other advanced things I can do is actually create occupancy or vacancy based off of a preset. So I'd go ahead and enter my preset numbers in here. So I have presets 1 through 4. And how I want it to act on motion or on no motion. Obviously, I can adjust those delay periods. So I do have my, <clears throat> my actual physical timeout. So how long until this light turns off on me. But I can also do other things to where if I have a switch across the room, I can turn off and disable the sensor just long enough for me to get out of the room so the lights don't turn back on. Um, also within... Here we have light control. So you can do <coughs> closed loop or open loop uh, daylighting. And again, this is going to be based off presets. But because you have that photo sensor, you can actually see the lux levels and decide what bands that you're going to uh, put in here so you know how the lights are going to react based on the lux levels. OK, we're going to take a second and talk about a timed event. A timed event can be more than just a time suite to turn lights or on and off in a particular area. It can also unlock or lock a keypad, enable or disable a center, or even send a, a preset offset so a button you press will act differently during a certain time of day. It's very easy to go ahead and adjust these things. You can just go into the edit, edit schedules. You'll see I have a number of these already created. Um, one to enable the hallway keypad. So you're walking through the school, you want to create some mischief and turn the lights off in the class, well, not with this enabled, you won't be able to create, you won't be able to do anything with those keypads because they are disabled during 
school hours. Um, after hours sweep off. This is just to make sure that everything's turned off. Um, and disable those hallway keypads. So enable them and disable them. The one we're going to talk about is the actual parking lot on and off. Um, I'm going to select it and go down into modify here. And here I can see the name of the event, how long I want it to happen, and when the actions actually happen. Now if I go down to advanced, I can see on schedule start, I want these lights to turn off. Or I'm sorry, to turn on on area 4, which is my parking lot. And on the schedule stop, I want them to turn on, which is the schedule off. Here we have a, a Matthew system. You can see we have a ballast that's gone bad. Um, we're going to go ahead and do a dolly ballast replacement. I'm going to go up here and hit my pointer. I'm going to go down to my load controller. And I'm going to simply go to dolly ballast replacement. Here I can see my three universes of dolly. I can query my ballast. It shows me which ballasts are online. And then I do have an offline ballast here. I can simply go to next. It shows me which ballast is offline. I go to replace that. And we're done. So one of the features of the software is you can actually have it notify you via email of a lamp removal or a ballast offline, a, a number of different things that you can go in and select. But for demonstration purposes, we're just going to go in, go ahead and remove this lamp. Now once I remove this lamp, I should get an email a few minutes later and there it goes. And you can see that it actually tells me what lamp has been removed, I know where to go and replace it, and then I can go ahead and take care of that. Once that lamp's back online, I put it back in, and, it, and the software will actually show me that it's back um, online and, and have been replaced. For most facilities, you're going to need different access for different features for different people. And the way you can set that up is through Tools, Security Settings, and you, as you can see here, we have some different people named already. We have our, <clears throat> our receptionist, our facility manager, and our trained tech. Our receptionist will have access to file navigation so she can flip between pages, but she also has single click control so she can turn an area on or off by pressing the keypad. Now we step into the facility manager and he not only has that single click control and enable to navigation, but he also has file operations and ability to allow maintenance tasks. And then you can step up to say the factory chain tech who has access to all the features at all times. Thanks for your attention. Today we have covered navigating map view, changing a preset, working with sensors, timed events, ballast replacement, maintenance reporting, and user permissions. 